Good morning, children. Welcome back to lesson 2.3. We're going to talk about carbon compounds. Uh, quite a big lesson today, so make sure you take pretty good notes. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the, describe the qualities of carbon, and you should be able to describe the structure and function of each macromolecule. These are all the key terms you should know. So by the end, if you don't know them, go back, watch it over. All right, so we're going to start out by talking about carbon, which has an atomic number of six, uh, like we've talked about, so six protons, six electrons. Um, and it's really a crucial element for life because it has four valence electrons, right? If you remember, a valence electron is a free electron in the outermost ring. And we see a one, two, three, and four. Uh, and the great thing about having four valence electrons is that it allows it to make um, covalent bonds and more than just single bonds, double bonds, and even triple bonds. And this is great because it can bond with itself, okay? And usually this is in two forms. It can bond carbon to carbon to make long chains, right? So if we look here, we have a carbon, 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 carbon. And these chains could go on really forever, right? It depends on how much carbon you have. Um, so they can make long chains, and they can also make rings, which are really cool, right? We see a carbon to carbon single bond, and we see these two lines are a double bond, right? And it forms around in a ring uh, to make what's called a, a carbon ring, right? So carbon is really cool because it can make these long chains, make these rings, and it really allows the basis to make molecules for life. Um, and that's the point of today's lesson is we're going to talk about these molecules of life or the macro molecules, right? So the prefix macro means big. So these are kind of like the big molecules of life. And to talk about macro molecules, we need to understand that we make them up of little pieces, okay? So most macro molecules are formed in a process called polymerization. And polymerization uh, starts with individual tiny pieces called monomers, all right? And mono means one. So if we think about monomers, we're thinking about all these little pieces coming together through polymerization to form a polymer, all right? And the prefix poly means many. Not many, many, okay? So these monomers join together to form polymers. One single little pieces come together to form bigger ones. Um, there are four major types of macromolecules that we're going to talk about. Now, each one may have a different monomer, but they still follow the same idea, that it takes lots of little pieces, little monomers, to come together and form a really big polymer or macromolecule, right? And it's crucial to remember that the polymer is formed because of carbon, right? We can make these long chains or big rings that carbon serves as the backbone carbon can be polymerized into a really long molecule. Now the first macromolecule we're going to talk about is called carbohydrates. I'm sure you've heard about carbs before, counting carbs. Um, and right, carbs that we know of are bread, um, some chickpeas, potatoes, corn, um, maybe some things like grapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and even like this delicious panini bread that was on sale at Stop and Shop. Okay, so carbohydrates are the first type of macromolecules we're going to talk about. Um, they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms, pretty much always in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 1 for the, each of them. So if we look at our most common sugar, right, carbohydrates are basically sugars, uh, and we look at the most common one, glucose, which I'm only have heard about, as we notice it forms this ring here, right? This carbon can form rings or long chains. It forms this long ring, and its uh, molecular formula is C6H12O6, right? 1 to 2 to 1, 6 to 12 to 6. Okay. Um, now, carbohydrates have two purposes in life. The first one, and one of the more major ones that we use, is we use them for energy. Right before you go on a long marathon run, run a couple miles, you cross country runners, uh, you're going to do like a carb load a night or two before, right? You're going to eat all these carbs to get all these sugars to have lots of energy. The other use for carbohydrates is structure, okay? 
Now, how can we use bread for structure, right? Are we making gingerbread houses? No, okay. Uh, a lot of times, plants will use carbohydrates for structure, and we'll talk about that. Um, now, there's two types of carbohydrates. The first one is monosaccharides, all right? And again, that mo prefix mono means one. Uh, and this is referring to simple sugars, okay? So a simple sugar would be something like glucose, fructose, galactose. Um, these are kind of like your healthy sugars that you should be eating, all right? Very simple, lots of fruits and vegetables, like these grapes um, have a lot of monosaccharides, simple sugars. They're very healthy for you. Uh, and a good source of energy. And the reason they're monosaccharides, or again, one, is because they usually only consist of one ring. So like this fructose, right? There's only one ring of carbon and oxygen here. Glucose, again, this one ring. Galactose, one ring. And this is different than the next type of sugar called a polysaccharide. Now remember, the prefix poly means many, okay? Um, and we have two types of polysaccharides glycogen, which you may not have heard of, and starch, okay? Um, and the reason we have polysaccharides is because it's many of these little rings bonded together. If we look at starch here, right, we see one ring, two ring, three ring, four ring, five ring, okay? They fall in these huge long chains of sugars that are bonded together. It would basically be like taking one monosaccharide, like glucose, and bonding 20, 30, 40 of them in a big long chain, okay? Uh, the two different types of polysaccharides, starches, are found in plants, okay, and glycogen are polysaccharides that are found in animals, okay. Um, some of the most common starches we see in plants are called cellulose, cellulose, okay, and cellulose uh, is responsible for forming cell walls, all right. So again, monosaccharides, simple sugars where there's one ring, very healthy for you. Polysaccharides, starches, and glycogen where they form long chains of these simple rings. The next type of macromolecule is called lipids, okay? And lipids are made from carbon and hydrogen and they are not soluble in water, all right? And another name for lipids that we would more commonly refer to them as are called fats, all right? So lipids are gonna be all your fats. Um, some of the ones we have here or like Crisco, butter, olive oil, soap, these are all lipid. Now to make a lipid, we really have two parts. We have a glycerol head, okay, and a tail that's called a fatty acid. So if we look at this, right, this is a smaller, this picture right here is a smaller version of this one. So we have a little head or a little circle. And we have this long fatty acid tail in the back, okay. If we see here, right, the yellow part is the glycerol. There's a carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. It's a glycerol head. And then these long tails, okay, are the fatty acids. And again, we, the main thing here is that we can see that characteristic of carbon forming long chains, okay, carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon bonds. Uh, so we got two parts to a lipid, a glycerol head and a fatty acid tail. Um, we have two types of lipids, which you've probably heard of before, right? We have saturated and unsaturated fat. Um, saturated fats are bad, okay? If you eat saturated fats, you will not look good in your middle years of life. Unsaturated fats are healthy fats, okay? So one example of a saturated fat would be butter, Ugh, bad. Some unsaturated fats which are healthy would be like olive oil or even avocados mm, okay um, and the reason we the way we tell between a saturated and an unsaturated fat has to do with the fatty acid tail okay if we have a double bond in the fatty acid tail it is an unsaturated fat okay so an unsaturated fat has a double bond at least one double bond in the fatty acid tail a saturated fat has no double bonds, okay? So it has zero double bonds in the saturated fat. Again, no double bonds in a saturated fat, and at least one double bond in an unsaturated fat, okay? Um, at room temperature, unsaturated fats are usually liquid, okay? 
um, at room temperature saturated fats are usually solid. Okay, so butter, very bad for you. It's a saturated fat. It is a solid at room temperature. All right, our third macromolecule is called a nucleic acid. All right, now nucleic acids contain hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. Okay, um, now nucleic acids are made from po our polymers, right, like all macromolecules, and they are made, their monomers are called nucleotides. Okay, so nucleotides make up nucleic acids. Um, and there's three parts to a nucleotide. We have a five carbon sugar. Okay, so again, we see that ring of carbons here. Right, one, two, three, four, five. We have a nitrogenous base, or just basically something that's containing nitrogen, and a phosphate group. All right, so the three parts of a nucleotide are the five carbon sugar, nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group. Um, and nucleic acids are super important because they form the backbone uh, of genetic and heredity in living things, right? They form DNA, which is this guy on the left, DNA, and RNA, okay? Um, so these nucleic acids are things like thymine, guanine, cytosine, adenine, right? They're in the middle here of this double helix of the DNA, um, and the orders of nucleic acids in your DNA are responsible for all your genetic traits, okay? So again, nucleic acids, are made up of nucleotides, are their monomers, which is this right here, right? This is a nucleotide. Um, and the nucleic acids are responsible for all your genetic traits. All right, now our last macromolecule that we're going to talk about, and probably one of the most important ones, is protein. Okay, now proteins are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. Uh, again, proteins are polymers because they're macromolecules, and their monomers that build them up are called amino acids, right? It's very easy to get that confused with nucleic, right? But amino acids are the monomers that make up proteins. Um, now, amino acids, I wouldn't worry too much about this, right? Um, are formed by an amino group and what's called a carboxyl group, or a COOH, on each end. Okay, so right here... Um, this is, would be one amino acid, right? We have an amino group bonded to a carboxyl group. And right, your proteins come from things like fish, okay, some nice frozen fish here that I caught, uh, and meat, right, like this steak here, okay? So proteins come from your meats a lot of times. Um, and the reason I said proteins are usually like one of the more important ones to life uh, is that proteins are responsible for most chemical reactions and functions in your cell, okay? so. I would write that down. The job of proteins is to run most chemical reactions uh, in your cell, and they allow you to do processes that are life, right? They're responsible for that key term we talked about uh, earlier in the chapter, metabolism, all right? You could not do metabolism if you didn't have functioning proteins. Um, so the monomers of proteins are amino acids, okay? And to make proteins, what we do is we make, again, long chains or bonds of these amino acids. So right here, right, we see we have like alanine, for example, and serine, for example. Um, amino acids are bonded together, what's called a peptide bond. All right, so they're formed by peptide bonds. Okay, and when we have long strings of amino acids bonded together, all right, bipeptide bonds, we get what's called a polypeptide, okay, a polypeptide. So a protein could also be known, well, almost known as a polypeptide, all right? So we get these long chains of amino acids bonded by peptide bonds, and basically we get a big mess of stuff, right, of carbon and oxygen and hydrogen um, that forms these proteins. So this is what a protein actually looks like right here, right, this big glob of stuff. And these polypeptides are going to start to make even more bonds, uh, and they start to bunch up and make all funky little shapes, which we'll talk more about. All right, so just remember that proteins are essential for those chemical reactions to make your body work, to make cells work. Um, and proteins are made of amino acids, which are bonded together by peptide bonds, and they form polypeptides. 
All right, what a lesson, kids. A lot of stuff. I would definitely go back and watch this a couple times before tomorrow. Um, this was a heavier one.